Uh, Councillor Pearson, it's Steve Robichaud. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Sound check on uh, presenter. Deferring Sorry. if there's a time. every day from people in the community concerned about the building and what's happening and this long-term protection and stabilization since the fire. We'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Check on presenter. But anyways, and then also the three sound check on Claire's computer. Just a second, Esther.
board two, chair of the planning committee. And it's great to have all of my virtual friends with me from so wards throughout the city. Welcome to our meeting for this July 7th, 2020. And thank you to our three clerks who are also present and our information technology helpers who are here too. Good morning. The planning committee is now officially in order and members of the public are advised that our meetings are webcast live by the city of Hamilton and, and archived on our website. Madam Clerk, looking at pages to the agenda now, Lisa. Oh yeah. Prior to changes to the agenda, let's officially do roll call. We have uh, myself, I've already indicated, uh, present uh, Councillor Brenda Johnson, our second vice. If you wanna indicate verbally so we know you're active. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Collins. And just setting up. Just setting up. Great. Councillor Councillor Whitehead, we expect will be uh, coming along shortly. Councillor Partridge. Okay. I'm here. Just keep it on. Councillor Wilson. Background. Do your own present. Do your own thing. Councillor Paul our John Paul Danko, our there. first vice chair. Okay. Mostly present. And Councillor <laughs> Maria, <laughs> here, Councilor like Maria Pearson. Present. So you you got the invite. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Madam Clerk, any yeah. changes to you the agenda? Put your video on unless yes mr speaking. chair there are changes we have and added correspondence 4.3 from mute. heather Keep bond respecting urban it hens 4.4 4. joanne fenbo respecting right. urban hens 4.5 fred patterson respecting urban hens 4.6 paul valeri from valeri homes requesting deferral of decision on the designation of 828 Sanatorium Road, which is item 6.4 in, in item 6.4, the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee report, recommendation number three, as well 6.4 is the added Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee report 20-003. For item 7.2, the zoning bylaw amendment for 378 Harmony Hall Drive, we have a written submission from Danielle and Teresa Causey. And we also have 11.1 .1, an added notice of motion respecting the waiving of all road widening at 20 East Avenue South. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. A mover and a seconder to approve the agenda as amended now, please. That is moved by Councillor Pearson and seconded by Councillor Partridge. All in favor? One moment. Going to Collins and is it up on the screen that I see the vote count? Okay, there it is. Yep. All right, that carries. Uh, discussion on this agenda as amended. I don't see any discussion on the agenda as amended. Um, And we voted already. That's interesting. Okay, members of the committee, we're looking at uh, delegations or declarations of interest at this time. Any declarations of interest with respect to today's agenda? Okay, let me move my so I can hear you. Seeing none. Okay, those who've uh, noted a conflict, you're going to, uh, you don't have any, so we don't need to go over that procedure. I need a mover and a seconder now to approve the minutes of our June the 16th, 2020 meeting as presented. And if there's any discussion on those minutes, okay, Councillor Danko, seconded by Councillor Pearson, all in favor on the minutes for June the 16th. And that carries what you've done here. Councillor Johnson, we're looking for your vote. Well, did we get it? Thank you. Councillor Collins, we are now on to communications and uh, Councillor Pearson, we're looking for to you to uh, move item 4.1 as a referral to the next Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee for consideration. <clears throat> I'll need a second or two, Councillor. 
I can't hear. Uh, Councillor Partridge is going to second that for you. Did you want to speak to it, Councillor Pearson? Or just. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hi. hi, thank you for that. Yes, and thank you for the seconder. Um, I'm fine with um, uh, referring this to the Municipal Heritage Committee. I believe the ward councillor also wants to be involved uh, and um, I'm supportive. Thank you. Excellent. And so to uh, the vote. Oh, sorry, Councillor. Councillor Partridge. Actually, I'm on 4-2 to 4-5, please. No problem. Voting on the referral to the Hamilton Municipal Heritage uh, Committee for consideration. This is the Ancaster Village Heritage Committee respecting demolition control as a positive force. Voting in progress. Concluded. And that passes. On to 4.5, Councillor Partridge. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd like to uh, just move to receive 4244 4, 4, and 4.5, please. Seconded by Councillor Pearson, or would Councillor Pearson like to speak to it? Anybody want to speak to it? I'll, I'll speak to it, Mr. Chairman. I thank Councillor Partridge for jumping on that as well. I'm more than happy to just receive this. We've gone down this road several times and I'm not prepared and I'm on record of saying I am not prepared to open up in any community in Hamilton to allow urban chickens at this time. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Um, thank you, Chair Farr. I appreciate that this um, item does have some history. I, I do have a few questions of staff, if I may ask. Please do. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, I could pick any one of the letters. I'll, uh, I'll just refer to say, for example, 4.3, Heather Bond. Um, to staff, through you, Chair Farr, um, do we know other municipalities? Are we aware of other municipalities that permit urban hens? So through you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I can try to respond to the question. Uh, yes, there are other municipalities that have uh, permitted um, uh, backyard hens in urban areas. We did uh, provide a report back uh, some time ago where we looked at some of the precedents um, when this matter was being previously considered, but I, I can't at the moment recall which municipalities we had identified. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I, I'm just requesting my colleagues um, some consideration if they would be open to referring some of these um, letters to the Healthy and Safe Community Division for a little bit of examination. I know that the issue of food security um, is one that is being sounded throughout Hamilton as the COVID um, blankets our area and we don't uh, have any foreseeable end in sight. And for many people, uh, backyard gardening, front yard gardening, and the prospect of, of uh, limited urban hens uh, would be, would address a security issue with respect to food and healthy food. Um, I do know that, for example, the city of Toronto, of course, has their pilot project, which started, um, I believe in 2018. Um, I've done a little work on it and uh, their bylaw officials have not received any complaints about noise or unsanitary conditions. And I think they'll probably be issuing perhaps their um, evaluation of that pilot, which occurred in four urban wards in the city of Toronto. And I, I would be interested in learning um, from a best practice of what worked, what didn't, um, any unintended consequences, particularly at this time of COVID. And I think perhaps that's where the majority of the, the letter writers are, are coming from. And I would like that assessment to be done. So I would ask for your support in referring this uh, these letters for some assessment of the pilot in Toronto and any other urban pilots that have been done within the context of, of food security during this um, pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Do we have anyone else? Councillor Partridge? Okay. Councillor Partridge? 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, no, and I'm not prepared to support that. I, I don't think this is uh, a question for food security until the zoning issues have been addressed. So, you know, this would have to be dealt with, I believe, and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this would have to go through zoning first. Uh, and then uh, bylaws would need to be amended. It then needs to go to um, our animal bylaw. And uh, I'm not prepared to support it. We, uh, we went through a great exhaustive um, exploration of backyard chickens and, uh, and ducks. And, you know, it, it just, um, we, we had more than enough delegations, spent an awful lot of staff time. And I'm just not prepared to um, have our staff spend any more time exploring something that we've already explored when it really does come down to a zoning issue. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Yep, thank you very much. Um, not to reiterate what everyone else has, has gone through, I just have a quick question, I believe, uh, through you to Jason Thorne. This was decided during this term already, correct? And does it need two thirds of a vote for all this to get turned around? Through you, Mr. Chair, I believe that was let the most recent consideration was in this term. Um, clerks would have to confirm, uh, but if that's the case, then then my assumption would be that there'd be required a two thirds to uh, to revisit. Okay, thank you. And I should have asked the clerk that, but I, I think I got my answer anyways. Um, so just to to reiterate a little bit, I believe this last term we had a, a lady come up with a duck up at the podium and for everyone that wanted urban chickens, we had two that said, please don't let my neighbor have urban chickens. We've gone through it. Um, and I understand that there was somebody who has a beautiful backyard with chickens in it. And it turned out that uh, the neighbors complained. So I'm not ready to go down that uh, route only because uh, the Agricultural and Rural Affairs Committee um, had a very exhaustive discussion about this and their recommendation is is to not allow and I am going to be supportive of the Agricultural and Rural Affairs Committee. Thank you. Anybody else? So if I can pass the chair to Councillor Danko, please. And I will, uh, as uh, obviously you know my history on this issue over uh, 10 years now, um, it's uh, clear, at least with the planning committee, and respectfully, the fear of hens endures on this uh, planning committee and probably on this council. I am uh, twice bitten and three times shy on moving um, on this, but I have said uh, many times publicly, I'll always be supportive. It's my understanding as well that every community surrounding this community is in some way, shape or form um, entertaining backyard hens. The take up is not huge. It's not a, a massive uh, chickens everywhere scenario in the in the Guelphs and the Niagara's and the Toronto's uh, where, where obviously it's more of a pilot. Um, that said, uh, you know, the strong arguments, I believe that uh, people like Christina and Heather and Joanne and Fred have shared with us with the communications uh, today in planning committee and so many others in our community, the food security arguments, the, 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 the hens as pets arguments, um, <clears throat> the uh, coops and the containment of those coops and the, the ease in which these other communities are able to enforce um, the containment and the, the uh, property standards issues related to the coops. Uh, and again, the big thing is this is not something where um, you can expect, you know, 100,000 Hamiltonians the next day after ratification to have hens in their backyards. Um, there, from another property standards, the, the arguments I recall were noise. Uh, I remember going toe to toe on roosters for 10 minutes on this, which is not part of the argument with uh, Councillor uh, Ferguson. Uh, the last time we, I brought it specifically forward. This is about hens. And then the other complaint we're expecting property standards, of course, was the odors. And Councillor Pesuto, who was the farmer, won this uh, vote narrowly last time we looked at it officially uh, based on that stench or the perceived stench issue. Well, if you look after the coops, that's, that's a non-issue. And certainly all of us uh, regularly receive complaints uh, with respect to poop smells uh, from other pets, dogs in particular. 
Uh, so, you know, we manage there and there are certainly thousands and thousands of dogs and we wouldn't have thousands and thousands of chickens. So I just wanted to reiterate, it's not my intention to, to strike out uh, on this a third time, but I'm understanding that there are others possibly around this table that may want to entertain it. And so finally through you uh, to maybe the clerk, I guess, uh, uh, Janet or, or Lisa, does anything prevent um, if, if we if we just simply receive the correspondence here today, does any anything prevent a member of council from bringing forward, as Councillor Wilson indicated, uh, some good questions to emergency community services? Because I believe this is a health uh, and community services argument as much as it is, as rightly pointed out by another member just moments ago, a zoning issue. So to one of our clerks, does anything prevent a member of council no. from bringing the issue forward to no, much? No, we have no. just received no. these items. Okay. So on that, again, thank you very much. This uh, issue will never die. Uh, and it's one I'm hoping it's somewhere down the road we'll, we'll take seriously as a council. And, and to reiterate, I'll always be supportive. So I'll take the chair back. Thank you, Councillor Danko. And so the motion from Councillor Pearson, and I believe second, or motion from Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson, is it? Yeah, to receive items four, two through four, five. All in favor. Seven oh, it carries. Thank you. And on two four six, so I'll go back to you, Councillor Pearson. This is uh, Paul Valerie Valerie Holmes requesting a deferral of the decision on the designation of eight twenty eight Sanitarium Road. Yeah. That's item mm -hmm. six point four on our Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee recommendation. Or do we deal with this at item six point four? We can deal with it now, Councillor Pearson. Please. I can deal with it now or at the yep. at the municipal heritage, but now it's fine because it's a now correspondence it's item. So yep. I could ask that, uh, I don't know who would second this, I'd like to refer this back to municipal heritage committee um, with the intent of having the app applicant attend or write, because I understand with COVID we're not receiving um, in-person delegations. So write to the committee with regards to their position. I think they've already sent, I received something last night in that, um, and then this can come back to the next PED after Municipal Heritage in August. Councillor Collins, you're seconding, and Councillor Danko, Thank please. Thank you. Councillor Danko. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question through you to uh, staff. I understand there's a long history with this um, designation on this site. Could, could staff just quickly re reiterate some of the history involved? Uh, so through you, Mr. Chair, I'll ask uh, Mr. Robichaud to speak to some of the, uh, the history on it. Some of it is captured in the Heritage Committee motion, but uh, but Steve can speak to the background. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thorne. Uh, through you, um, Mr. Chairman, to the Councillor. Uh, you are correct. In 2018, Heritage Committee adopted the staff recommendation to proceed with the designation of this property. The um, Secondary plan for the Chedmac area actually identified this property as being worthy of designation and being retained. Um, in 2018, Council deferred consideration. Planning Committee adopted the Heritage Committee recommendation to designate it, but the matter was deferred at the September 2018 Council meeting to provide an opportunity for the owner to provide some additional information. It would, at that time, the owner had some um, concerns with what was in the staff um, report in terms of why the property should be designated and some of the heritage features. And we haven't received any correspondence or any additional information from the owner since that 2018 deferral. And then uh, most recently, um, the issue that's come to the forefront is the property has been um, subject to vandalism. And I believe that there was a fire a couple of months ago and the owner has been uh, working with the property standards group in trying to stabilize, secure and protect the building from ongoing vandalism and trespassing activity and has had uh, meetings with both heritage planning staff and MLE staff in terms of looking at options to stabilize the building. Um, there has been a fair amount of community interest in this building and email going back and forth over since the fire has occurred. And then on 
last Friday at Heritage Committee, the Heritage Committee members, because they watch uh, all the properties with, um, that are on the potential to be designated, or um, this matter just came up and the Heritage Committee made the decision to request Planning Committee and Council to proceed with the designation at this point in time. Thank you. So did I hear you correctly that since September 2018, nearly two years, the owners had an opportunity to address the designation issues? Through you, Madam Chair, through you, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. This matter was tabled on September 2018 uh, to provide the op opportunity for the owner to submit some additional information or to meet with staff to talk about what was in the staff report and the um, cultural heritage impact assessment that was prepared to recommend designation of the property. And there's been no additional meetings or no information provided since that September 2018 date. So now that the heritage committees decided to actually move forward with designation, now the owner is all of a sudden waking up and realizing that they want to comment on this and asking for a deferral. I believe we got a, a email from the uh, agent of the owner requesting that. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, the heritage committee did in 2018 recommend that it be designated and they've been monitoring the property but I believe it was in response to the fire and vandalism and concerns right. about the building. That's what um, it's sort of on the watch list. The Heritage Committee has a watch list when you look at their agenda. And I believe it was in response to that vandalism, fire and uh, proposed uh, stabilization and restoration works that the owner is contemplating that the Heritage Committee felt that it would be prudent to proceed now with the designation because by designating the property the city would have more control over how that stabilization works would proceed. Otherwise, it would be just straight to a demolition permit um, and that it would be based more on OBDC uh, demolition permitting matters as opposed to heritage conservation, restoration and protection matters. And that was the committee's concerns on Friday and the basis for their uh, resolution to planning committee asking that the city proceed with the designation at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the motion is on the table to defer this back to Heritage Committee. Um, what's the timeline for it to then come back to Planning Committee for actual designation? Uh, subject to, if it went to the August Planning Committee, Heritage Committee, it, I would anticipate on just normal process, it would be closer to, it would be the September Planning Committee September. Um, before this matter would be before committee, provided that... Um, committee made sure that it was referred to that August meeting and that it come back one way or the other to September as a in case as you know if the owner is asking for more time at least it should come back so that a decision can be made and just last uh, two questions here is th this property is on the um it's not designated but it's a registered property so we'd have notice if there was um a demolition permit um put in uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. The property is on the registry. So if they applied for a demolition permit, council would have 60 days to make a determination as to whether or not to proceed with uh, the designation of this property. So we, we would uh, have an opportunity then to go to immediate designation as it's, it's already on the, you know, set for designation. Um, be fairly straightforward for this property in particular. Uh, through Mr. Chairman, that is correct because, like I said, there was previously a staff report and a recommendation coming out of Heritage Committee and Planning Committee to proceed with the designation. So the, all of that background work and research has been done. We would just have to um, confirm that the uh, designated features are still intact because of the previous uh, fire of the property and sort of the ongoing issue of trespass and vandalism that's been occurring. Thank, Thank you. you. And last question, do we have last indication question. from the ward councillor if they're in favor of designation now or deferral? Have we have we heard from Councillor Whitehead, I think it is? We have not. Okay. okay. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Councillor uh, Partridge and then Pearson. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. First, I want to thank Councillor Pearson for um, all the great work that's being done by the Heritage Committee. Um, you know, folks, we've been down this road before in 2018, as was just previously mentioned, and um, there's been, you know, nothing from the uh, from the develop developer. Um, they asked for that time, they were given that time, and nothing has been done. Now we have a committee of council um, residents who have 
you know, truly committed. I sat on the on the heritage committee, and, and you know, these residents. This is something that that um, you know they have a real passion for, and they brought That's forward perfect. another request to have it designated. And it is my understanding that the ward councillor, um, you know, councillor Whitehead, his intent is also to uh, push forward with the designation. So. I'm, I'm not prepared to refer this um, back to the committee. I think it's going to frustrate them. They've, they've been down this road before, only to turn around and send it back to us again. I don't know how many times we need to get the message that uh, the folks in the community want, want this building uh, designated. And since 2018, there's been vandalism, um, there's been graffiti, there's been fire, and, and I don't know what else we're waiting for unless it's to see the place burnt to the ground. So I'm not prepared to uh, support the, uh, the referral back to the committee. Um, I want to support the good work that uh, our residents sitting on that committee do as I as Councillor uh, Pearson does. I mean, as I say, she does an excellent job. So those are my comments. I'll be voting against it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Partridge. I think, I think that the deferral is because the communication item from Paul Valerie states they just received notice, Correct. but just just yeah. Councillor Pearson now, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I appreciate the, all the comments, especially Councillor Partridge, who was also on Heritage Committee last term. Um, I wouldn't lightly put this forward. Um, I agree. One of the, the concerns, and I even was surprised that Municipal Heritage Committee uh, minutes are coming to Planning Committee today because we just had the meeting Friday. We haven't even ratified those minutes at Heritage Committee. So it's kind of a, a little bit of putting the cart before the, before the horse right now. So Mr. Valeri had no idea of this. <clears throat> I can't speak to the history of it, I'm sorry, but they don't have, um, their issues are, they just want to reiterate with the committee um, moving forward. So they are having the, the property assessed right now by engineers. They have every intention of, of um, maintaining this building. Unfortunately, they can't control the break-ins, they're trying. And uh, the fire, just for the committee's member, the fire was in an accessory building. It wasn't in the main building. So, um, you know, they're trying to deal with this, but they just want the opportunity to uh, address the committee. I don't know what happened between 2018 going forward when it was originally deferred. Unfortunately, it didn't come to me at that point to say, you know, let's, let's, um, let's deal with this some other way. But I certainly would appreciate the opportunity for them to at least put um, their comments in writing to the committee. And then it comes to planning committee after that uh, to ratify the Heritage Committee's direction. I don't think it changes anything that's happening right now. So, Thank you, Councillor Pearson. Your seconder is Councillor Collins. Collins. There are no further speakers. <clears throat> and so the motion to defer to the next Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee is now on the floor. Didn't see it. Carries carries four to three on to consent items committee. Uh, we may wish to consider all these items under section six consent items on the agenda in one motion or consider each one separately. I leave it in your hands uh, and look to whomever wants to speak to whatever. I see Councillor Collins to move all three items <clears throat> or all the uh, items, four items, and that is seconded by Councillor Partridge. Anybody want to speak? Councillor Collins, and I bet it's 6.1. It is 6.1. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. So I, I just wanted to understand whether the terms of reference at some point in time will change because, as we know, the parking master plan review was started obviously well before uh, the COVID situation and the pandemic. And I ask about the terms of reference as it relates to you know, there's all kinds of information out there as it relates to competing priorities for the curb lane and whether it's uh, deliveries, cycling, um, transit, uh, motor vehicles, obviously using the road. And um, the pandemic has certainly changed uh, traffic patterns, um, plummeting transit use, as we know, 
uh, a substantial increase in home deliveries, single occupancy vehicle use. So I just wondered with all of those changing dynamics in play, um, you know, will this study change? Because the old metrics, obviously, that would have been used most likely don't apply. Everything from, you know, plummeting retail sales with bricks and mortar to even office space. There's so many people working at home right now. There's obviously less demand and maybe for the foreseeable future for, um, for formal office space, whether it's in the downtown or elsewhere. So all of these issues related to the pandemic will have an impact on parking. And I just wonder how those issues might be incorporated into a plan that's already well underway. Very good question. Who do we have, Brian Hollingworth? Yeah, uh, thanks for that question uh, through the chair to Council Collins. And, and a very good question. The, the short answer is is yes. We we have to pivot a little bit. Our terms of reference is, is flexible enough that it's a citywide comprehensive parking master plan. The uh, mm. point that was made, uh, we are starting now uh, to get into thinking about the recommendations. The, the purpose of this update is to really show what's been done, we've collected the data, we've done the stakeholder consultation. We're now starting to frame the recommendations if council or, or committee wanted to weigh in on those uh, and, and steer us in any direction. So um, we will be adopting a little bit, what I call a bit more of a, a flexible approach to parking management. Uh, you mentioned on curbside, uh, really important, but also thinking about things like, do we want a, a more of a flexible parking pass for monthly parkers who, you know, might not be working five days a week, but want to pay for parking for three days a week. So everything's on the table at this point. Um, I can't say exactly what direction we'll, we'll be headed, but mm -hmm. there will have to be some innovation in the recommendation. Super. Glad it's flexible and you'll take into account those issues and many others. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Brian, while we have you, just quickly and for clarity on 6-1, you're having another PIC at the end of this summer. How are you going to do that? Is that a virtual? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably adopt uh, virtual techniques um, this working on, on tools. Um, I think it might actually be, be better and, and reach more people than a physical PIC, but we'll, we'll play that by year. Thank uh, you. Certainly, we'll do our best to reach out to as many people as possible. Councillor Danko, I missed you. Sorry. On which item would you like to speak? I have a question on 6.3 and a question on 6.4. Um, okay, go ahead. So on, on 6.3 is some updates to our parking bylaws. And in the report, it, it mentions the, um, the payment app system. With, and I noticed that we've just launched that officially. Um, so can I just get an update on the, uh, the parking payment app and how that relates to this particular uh, bylaw update? Brian? Yeah, I'll, I think Amanda McElveen, Manager of Parking Operations, is on. I'll let her speak to the rationale for that report. It's really a, a lot of uh, basic housekeeping items to support the new technologies. Amanda? Sure, through the chair. Um, so basically, as Brian said, it's uh, really just a housekeeping report. And uh, it's to ensure that all methods of payment are enforceable now. Um, through our apps bylaw, um, we just took a look at the, um, the different bylaws that regulate on and off street parking to ensure that with uh, the app or any other different type of technology, such as EV chargers, um, they will be able to be enforced uh, through the, the current bylaws. Thank you. And the, the app is live now? Yes, the app is live. Um, you know, we, we couldn't be more thrilled, obviously. I know it's been long in the waiting and um, it's working super well. Um, it's, uh, it's a large city, a large, large footprint to roll out a parking app, but uh, I think we've done a pretty good job and uh, everyone that we've talked to so far has been uh, pretty happy about having a, contact, a contactless payment in a time like this. So it's good. And when when did it go live? So it it went live yesterday uh, officially. Yesterday. Yeah, we we were running some test transactions on the live system last week, so we could make sure that uh, all of the back end was working properly when you move from test to production environment. 
um, and uh, we haven't had any complaints as far as um, the usage of the app so far. So fingers crossed, um, we will uh, we we will continue to uh, fix little things here and there if it becomes an issue. But so far, so good. That's awesome. No, I, I'm really excited about it. I think it's a, a fantastic step forward. That's going to just um, you know be very very well received in the community. So thank you for that. Um, on, do you want me to ask my question on six four now, or do you want me to come back to it? No, go ahead, Councillor. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Four is the Municipal Heritage Committee report, and there was uh, a little bit of discussion on the the Ockmar Gatehouse at seventy one Claremont Drive. So this is not the main Ockmar property. This is a separate property that's a couple blocks away. Um, it's just a small little cottage that's on the, um, on a separate lot. It's a registered property, but it's not designated, and it's gone through several paths to designation over the years. So I, I just noticed that it came up on the heritage at the heritage committee, and uh, it was designated as um, a black status. So could I just get staff to explain to me uh, what that is exactly, and uh, what the path designation for this property might be? Hi, so the chair, this is Miranda Brunton. I'm the cultural heritage planner for the area. So on the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee, we do have the list of properties that we go through. Uh, listing black is something that the Hamilton Municipal Heritage Committee considers that it's properties that might be out of, out of, not under the control. So, you know, it's not city owned, it's not designated. So they believe that there could be some issues coming up um, in the future. In terms on the path to designation, it is on staff's designation worth plan, noted to be designated in 2019 and now rolled up to 2020. So it is on the plan and we are hoping to work on it. Unfortunately, at this time, we do have a number of properties that are uh, listed for 2020. Um, so we may or may not be able to get to it this year. We're hoping that through maybe um, our work plan processes and the review of our work plan that we'll be able to rearrange it and come forward to it at this time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is, um, it's a small property, but it's it's probably historically speaking, one of the more significant properties that we have in the city that is not unfortunately currently designated. Um, and just through you, Mr. Chair, just so I'm absolutely clear, it is registered. So if there was a demolition application, we would have that same process, that 60 day uh, window to proceed with an emergency designation if that ended up being necessary. Through the chair, uh, that is correct. It is uh, does have that 60 day protection. So we would be able to act if anything came in on the property, particularly uh, a demolition application. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Those are all my Thank questions. You. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Amanda and Brian before. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair Farr. I was to, um, Councillor Collins beat me to it. I really appreciate his question. Um, I have intentionally been meeting and speaking with um, business owners, small and large. Uh, the last conversation I had actually was this morning um, with an AI specialist who has an office in San Francisco and here in Canada. Um, and uh, they don't see a path forward uh, from, for returning to their offices at all. Um, they're working uh, from home. Uh, they realize that creates other challenges in terms of childcare and um, other work-life balance. Uh, but this COVID uh, will have many implications. Um, some won't stay with us, but some will be long lasting. And I, I hope uh, that the terms of reference as Brian um, has responded are, are going to give him that flexibility, but that will apply to all of our capital uh, projects and priorities because um, I don't think very many people are rushing back to get to the office. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. I heard somewhere 35% of uh, Canadians will continue to telecommute too. So it's really, it was a well-placed question and uh, the timing couldn't uh, be better. So we're just receiving 6-1 parking master plan review slash update anyway, but uh, really important uh, information given the eventualities that COVID-19 has presented to us. So thank you to everyone. I think that's all. 6-1 uh, through 6-4 is moved by Councillor Collins. I forget who the seconder was. Councillor Partridge, and we seek now the electronic vote from all of you. Is 
7 0. Unanimous. Okay. On to uh, public hearings and written delegations. Uh, the public's been advised of their opportunity to participate virtually at uh, statutory public meetings. No members of the public have pre-registered for the public meetings being held today, however. So members of the public, in accordance with provisions of the Planning Act, please be advised that if a person or public body, I still read this. Uh, okay, uh, please be advised that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Council of the City of Hamilton before Council makes a decision regarding the official plan amendment, zoning by law amendment, draft plan of condominium and or draft plan of subdivision applications that are before us now, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Council of the City of Hamilton to the local planning appeal tribunal and the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal themselves they uh, have reasonable grounds to do so so before us now is the application to amend the urban and hamilton official plan this is uh, 1329 1335 barton street 33 3, 339 and 34750 road uh 16 to 30 foothills lane uh 40 zinfandale drive and blocks 13 14 18 and part of block 9 of uh, registered plan 62M-1241, Ward 10. We don't have members of the public folks uh, registered to speak on this item. So I'll just uh, seek now a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Johnson. All in favor? We good? It looks like Councillor Johnson would like to speak. Councillor Johnson, please. No, she's a seconder. Yep, this is okay. Let's start again. It's just as we don't have any members of the public register to speak, so I look for a mover in Councillor Pearson and a seconder in Councillor Johnson. Does anybody on committee wish to speak? Councillor Pearson? Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, but I thought, are we not voting to close the public meeting, close the public meeting, and then I can speak to the application after, correct? All in favor of closing thank the public you. meeting. It's yes, not coming you. up to vote in my button that's for. Yeah, we just wanted some clarity. Elise is bringing okay. it up now. Clerk thank Chamberlain, you. who's been thus far, just hit a little road bump on that one. That's all. She'll get better again. So now we do we want to move the uh, that carries. Do we want to move the staff presentation, Councillor Pearson? And that will be second by Councillor Collins. All in favor of waiving the staff presentation to speak to this, Councillor Pearson? Nope, no, that's fine. Okay. Anyone? Let's move it then. Look at it's already before us. Look at how quickly she bounced back, Clerk Chamberlain. Well done. I can't even keep up. You're working so quickly. All right. Now we're uh, looking to vote. But before we do that, Councillor Pearson. Oh, sorry. We have the agent, uh, Kelly Martell. Uh, Kelly is with MHBC Planning and uh, in attendance. Kelly, are you in support of the staff report? Right. Yes. Yeah, so we're we've reviewed the staff report and we're supportive of the recommendation. However, we do uh, have a request that um, basically since the time of writing of the staff report, an additional item to be uh, included in the amendment has been brought to our attention. And so we are requesting that. Um, an additional amendment be added and I can pull up the wording, but I do believe um, we've been in discussions with Councillor Pearson and she may have it on the screen. And so I'll, I'll leave it to the clerk and uh, Councillor Pearson to speak to that in a bit more detail. Okay, Kelly, stay with us. It looks like Councillor Pearson does have something. Councillor Pearson. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, I was going to raise that when we go back. We we um, 
got Kelly's uh, confirmation of uh, support. I was going to move it when we move the recommendation that there is an amendment with regards to a road access. And uh, Mr. Robichaud does have it. So I'm hoping that has been it's been put into the paperwork. And that's the question I was going to ask if we can okay. get follow the process. Okay. <laughs> Kelly, uh, sound good to you, Kelly? Yeah. Okay, that so we're going to. We're going to move and receive your delegation. Moved by Councillor Pearson and seconded by Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Kelly, for being with us. All in favor? Okay, now I need a, and that passes, I'm assuming. Seven oh. And now I'll move her in a second. The staff report to approve the application with this amendment and i think we'll speak to the amendment first uh and uh, also to include that there were no public submissions received on this matter i am looking to councillor pearson once more thank you mr am i uh, on yes. mr yes thank you, you thank you mr D chairman and yes appreciate kelly's comments as well so i'll move this recommendation and support that staff are also in support of this application but i just want to verify because there was an addition that um policy 1.14.1.1 was to be added that said she'll be amended in order to permit the extension of sonoma lane to 50 road by way of the deposit of a reference plan and deeming and deeming by law, provided that the city receives all necessary assurances and securities in respect of the construction and dedication of such extension of Sonoma Lane to the satisfaction of Senior Director of Growth Management. That was to be added. I had conversations with Mr. Robichaud last week, and I'm just wondering if he has, uh, if that has been incorporated through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Robichaud. Director Robichaud, please. Uh, through the chair to the councillor, uh, Mr. Robichaud has just Sorry. stepped away. That's okay. Um, we have not yet incorporated it, but if that's the direction of planning committee, we can incorporate that into the uh, official plan amendment that would then go forward to council for adoption. Yes, and the need if you're there then, and that actually just streams line this process so they don't have to go through a whole uh, amendment again. It just keeps it in control of uh, keeping it under the... Um, um, what was it again? The do 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 you mean the, a reference plan? Is that correct? It just simplifies, so it's not a major. It just doesn't. It just prevents them or keeps them from having to start a whole process over again to have access to 50 Road. Correct. Uh, through the chair to the councillor, the secondary plan uh, doesn't actually indicate the local roads, so it, this right. is not uh, a necessary amendment. But it would just provide the clarity uh, that uh, and direction to staff that that uh, road connection be explored. And it has to be the satisfaction of the senior director of growth management. That has been discussed with both uh, um, Mr. Uh, Mancha and uh, Mr. Robichaud and, uh, and uh, confirmation to uh, Tony Sergi as well. So I'd like to be sure that's included and we'll add that amendment then, Mr. Chairman, and move the recommendation with that amendment. Thank you. Right, so we'll deal with the amendment first. Do we have uh, proper wording? Well, I, I was hoping that well, I was anticipating staff to have a motion here, so. Yeah, they just said they didn't. So so we can, yeah. we can between now and ratification, have the appropriate yep. wording and just move it as the amended uh, 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 words you shared. So, but I believe Councillor Johnson wants to speak to this. Councillor Johnson, is that correct? Councillor Brenda Johnson now. Councillor Johnson. Councillor Johnson. Am I on now? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> um, this is on the amendment, correct? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, for those uh, committee members that aren't aware, this was part of my ward, and, and I know that Councillor Pearson understands that I wore this file for eight long years. So. Um, and thank you, Melanie, for um, discussing what the what this amendment, or sorry, what the application was. Is first I've heard of the amendment. So through you to Anita, Anita, this amendment that's coming forward is Sonoma Lane going to be permanently accessed out to 50 Road, and that includes the grade separation, or is this just to have them access so that they can get their construction done? Through the chair to the councillor, the intent would be that there would be a permanent connection. Uh, what would then, what needs to be uh, investigated is um, 
where exactly the road would come out uh, and then looking at the the grade separation as well so those are those are um pieces of, of uh, information and investigations that would still need to be done but yes the intent would be that it would be a permanent connection yeah and it's and it would cause a lot of relief for that area because i can imagine the traffic um coming off Sonoma and, and Winona Road. So just to be clear, this is now through the um, approval through Tony Sergi and the group. So just to make sure that um, Sonoma is not going to impede 50 road traffic, but in fact, it's going to um, be a smooth roadway the whole bit because I travel that every day. So I understand this, the, the geographical area here through the chair of the councillor. So yes, it would need to be uh, reviewed by staff and it would be to Mr. Sergi's satisfaction. So they, they would have to be able to demonstrate how that connection would work, um, where it would be located specifically. So all of that would still come. The The proposed amendment is just to sort of put a, um, I guess the word like a placeholder or just identify that, that this connection um, is to be investigated. Okay, thank you. And my understanding too was that Sonoma Lane was supposed to have some traffic calming just to help that um, so that it's going to be a, a pass through this whole area, but there was going to be some traffic calming. I believe that was in the original um, secondary plan. Anyways, thank you. And I would be happy to second that and second the uh, staff recommendation at the end of the day. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Second time, Councillor Pearson. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank Councillor Johnson because um, certainly it's been a, a major learning curve to get a handle on this this particular development because there's so many pieces to it. Um, but appreciate, and I wanted to be sure uh, that whatever goes forward with access to, Son to from Sonoma Lane to 50 Road, that our staff are certainly involved very closely because there are, as the as the good councillor mentions, there are grade separations, there are issues. Um, but there's a chunk on that 50 road end that still has a developable piece of land as well. So there will be access there. Um, and I think it's just making everything work. But I wanted to be sure that uh, Mr. Sergi uh, or whoever is on, on this as well and making sure that everything is put in um, will work. I believe if I'm not mistaken, Councillor Johnson mentioned some traffic calming. I think something some things have already been installed. Uh, I was just down there about a week or two ago, and I'm sorry because it is a major area driving through. I can't remember the exact street, but there were some traffic um, um, calming uh, it, um, uh, items that were placed on the roadways down there. So just leave that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'm happy to move this and the amendment. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I need a mover and a seconder moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Johnson uh, regarding the staff report to approve the application with an amendment that there were no public submissions received on this matter. So we'll do that first. That's moved by uh, Pearson and Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, that's 7-0. And then on that, and Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Johnson uh, regarding the road. Let's do that now. And we'll get the wordage verbatim for ratification at Council. 7-0, and now a mover and a seconder on the main motion as amended, moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Johnson. And that carries unanimously. All right. Application now for the zoning bylaw amendment for lands located at 378 Harmony Hall Drive, part of uh, Block 117, Plan 62M-1122 Ancaster. This is Ward 12. We do not have any members of the public registered to speak to this item. So we'll look to a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. That is moved by Councillor Partridge. It is seconded by Councillor Collins. All in favor. That carries 7 0. Uh, mover and a seconder to waive the staff presentation. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Partridge. Okay, all in favor of 
completing the staff presentation. And I see Caitlin Gillis is here. Caitlin, I'm assuming you're in support of this staff presentation, or do you have a, a number of things you want to add as amendments as well? Good morning. No, I'm morning. Uh, reviewed staff's presentation. We're in support of the recommendation um, and happy to not present on this application. All right. And what do you got hanging up on the walls there at T. John's Consulting? What's that behind you there? We have a Hamilton map. Okay. We have Niagara region and we have Waterloo where most of our projects are. Next time, can you take us uh, on a tour of the staff kitchen, please? Thank you. Absolutely, if you want good, to. Good to see you. Say hello to Terry. Thank you for that. So uh, we'll move to receive uh, the applicant's presentation or delegation, I should say. Oh, sorry, that is moved by Councillor Pearson and seconded by Seconder Councillor Collins. All right, now I need a motion to, oh, sorry, Councillor Johnson wishes to speak. Oh, we're waiting for Councillor Johnson to vote. She has voted, and so that is uh, carried. And now I'll move her in to receive the written submissions. That is moved by Councillor Collins, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor? It's interesting, you gotta go back and forth. Councillor Johnson, all in favor on uh, receiving the written submissions, please. Thank you. That carries unanimously. And I move under now regarding the staff report to approve the application with the amendment that the public submissions received on this matter did not affect the decision. And that's moved by Pearson, seconded by Councillor Partridge. Okay, and a mover and a seconder now on the main motion as amended, moved by Pearson and seconded by Councillor Partridge. Pearson and Partridge. Excellent. All right, on to 7-3, this is an application for a draft plan of subdivision 43 Highway Number 5 Flamborough in Ward 15. We do not, again, have members of the public registered to speak to this item. So we seek out a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting here. And Councillor Partridge, please. Go ahead. Well, we, you know, Councillor Partridge will move. It'll be seconded by Councillor Collins. And I, did you want to speak as well or just vote on the closing of the public meeting first? Let's vote on the closing of the public meeting first. There, it's up already anyway, so, wow. All right, now a mover and a second to waive the staff presentation. Moved by Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor on waiving the staff presentation. Good. And that carries. I see uh, James web planning is in attendance uh james you're in support of this staff report are you uh, thank you yes mr chairman members of the committee uh we're in full support of the staff recommendations the con conditions of draft approval just a quick thanks to staff for completing the review and getting us before committee today and we look forward to proceeding with the development okay and that is some great canadian aboriginal art in the background at your office james absolutely thank you and a mover and a seconder to receive the delegation from the agent. Moved by Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor? Now a mover and a seconder. Oh, Councillor Wilson, please.
All right, I move in regarding the staff report to approve the application to the amendment that uh, and that to include there were no public submissions received in this matter. Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Anyone want to speak? Nothing. Okay. Uh, well, you do. Okay, Councillor Partridge, please go. Ahead. Yes, thank you, Chair. And you're doing a stellar job this morning. I must say, we're just ticking right along. <laughs> Um, I, I just want to speak very briefly to this file. Um, I'm very pleased to see the uh, draft plan of subdivision come forward finally for 43 Highway uh, Number 5. Uh, yet another uh, business park opening up in Flamborough, um, albeit not as large as the others, but we, uh, we will have another one coming forward, I believe, uh, in the next month or so. Um, lots happening up there, and I'm very, very pleased at the uh, amount of work. I want to I wanna particularly uh, thank Banu. Uh, on staff and, um, you know, under the, the leadership of uh, General Manager Thorne, um, it, it, these folks have, have really moved mountains to overcome some of the challenges that we had. Um, the neighboring property owners were uh, fantastic. I want to thank Course Lab and, um, you know, certainly um, all the folks that, that came together on this one. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. And moved by Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson. This is the staff report to approve the application with an amendment. No public submissions received on the matter. All in favor? Carries unanimously. And now moved by Councillor Partridge, seconded by Councillor Pearson uh, on the main motion as amended. Uh, two carries unanimously. All right, now to the initiative item 7.4, 19-H, change in zoning to the zoning bylaw, 05200, uh, NOS 328, 336, and 334 Beach Boulevard. This is uh, West Bayside of Beach Boulevard in Ward 5. We don't have any members of the public on this one registered either to speak to this item. So we'll look to a mover and likely Councillor Collins and a seconder to close the public meeting. I need a seconder. That's seconded by Councillor Danko. All in favor. Excellent. Now a motion, a mover and a seconder to waive the staff presentation. Is that moved by you, Councillor Collins? Seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor? Now a uh, that'll pass seven nothing and a motion to uh, regarding the staff report to approve the application with an amendment that there were no public submissions received on the matter and that'll be moved by Councillor Collins seconded by Councillor Pearson again nobody wishes to speak so please vote. And moved by that 7 0, and moved by Councillor Collins, seconded by Councillor Partridge. Uh, the main motion as amended now, please. Well done, colleagues. 7 0. On to 7 5. This is an application for approval of a draft plan of condominium lands located at 315 Dagley's Trail, Glambrook, Ward 9. We do not, once again, have members of the public registered to speak to this item, so we'll look to a mover and a second to close the public meeting. And that is by Councillor Brenda Johnson, seconded by Councillor Partridge. All in favor? Carrie, 7 0. Uh, mover and a second are now to. Staff presentation moved by Councillor Brenda Johnson, seconded by Councillor Collins. All in favor? Carries. Councillor Danko, you're good. Okay. Uh, Spencer Skidmore, AJ, 
Associates is in attendance. Spencer, are you in support of the uh, staff report? Thank you very much, Spencer. Nice, nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. Much, Mr. Chairman. Um, we are fully supportive of staff's recommendation for approval. Um, however, we do have, um, when reviewing some of the draft conditions associated with the staff report, um, we've been working with staff for the last couple of weeks on one condition in particular. Um, it's just a matter of timing as when the, the condominium can be registered and when easements can be created. So we're still tweaking that last condition. So I would ask that planning committee um, refer their recommendation until the next planning committee, which I believe is on July 14th. And that should give us plenty of time to work out um, some of the last speed bumps with staff with regard to the conditions and then bring forth uh, the report back to planning committee for consideration. Okay. Uh, the agent has asked for a referral to next week. Uh, we have planning committee next week. And if there's anyone among us wishing to move it, Councillor Johnson Spencer has agreed to do that. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Pearson, and just for my own clarity, Anita, I see you there, so I'll ask you, does that give you enough time to work with Spencer and, and get this thing through the uprights in a week's time? Uh, through the chair to the councillor, yes, that's enough time for us. We've already been having some conversations with, uh, with Spencer, so we'll just finalize that and uh, have it ready for next week. So Councillor Pearson, Councillor Partridge will receive Spencer's presentation. All in favor? What's the matter? Councillor Pearson, Councillor Partridge. Clerk Chamberlain's just working through her second glitch of the morning. And who would like to refer? Councillor Collins, please. Did you vote, Councillor, to receive Spencer? Councillor Collins, did you? He says he did. We'll just take it verbally. Okay. Thank you, Collins. Uh, and now to refer to the July 14th Planning Committee, the item moved by Councillor Johnson and seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor? Seven zero on the notices of thank you, and I'm keeping mine as a notice, so we'll leave it as this is the uh, road widenings for Twenty East Avenue South. I'm keeping it as a um, notice. I don't need to relinqu relinquish the chair for that. Okay, uh, and uh, on to general information. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so I'll pass the chair to you, Councillor Danko, as I read out my notice of motion. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, moved by myself, no seconder yet. Waiving all road widening 20 East Avenue South Ward 3, whereas the Planning Act and the Urban Official Plan state that the city shall reserve or obtain road widenings for rights of way as described in Schedule C2 future road widenings, whereas Transportation Planning staff have requested road widenings along the Main Street East Frontage, the Victoria Ave North Frontage, the King Street East Frontage. Therefore, be it resolved that staff be directed to amend the site plan condition file number DA-19-071 to waive all the road widenings for the lands located at the northwest corner of Main Street East and East Avenue South, known municipally as 20 East Avenue South. I'll take the chair back. Thank you, Councillor Danko. Uh, outstanding business list. I need to uh, move and get a seconder for approving the changes to the outstanding business list. And that is moved by Councillor Pearson. Councillor Wilson, you want a second? She may have a question. Do you have a question? Okay, Councillor Wilson, thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know the history of this, but I'm looking at the outstanding items. 19X, is that something that falls within the, that parking study mm -hmm. that we started our agenda discussion with today? I'll ask the clerk or staff. Or staff. It, did Jason catch that, Thorne? Yes, through you, Mr. Trail. Have to go back and review uh, this OBL item. I think it might be related to a motion from yourself, Councillor Farr, some time ago to look at allowing 
surplus parking spaces in some of the downtown condos and apartment buildings that aren't necessary for the residents to be made available uh, to the public as commercial parking spaces. Yes, it uh, is. And I do believe we had addressed some of that through the um, the downtown secondary planning commercial mixed use zoning. So I can take that back um, and, and review it and see if that is the matter and whether that might actually be something that we have dealt with, uh, but I'll have to go back and take a look. Appreciate that, thank you. So moved by Councillor uh, Danko, seconded by Councillor Wilson on the OBL. All in, uh, Councillor Danko, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question on 12A, the regulation of rental housing. I believe this is the, the rental housing bylaw. Can I just get uh, clarification from staff? Through, through the chair, yes, that's correct. Um, so in conjunction with this, we've already followed through with the, the secondary suites bylaw for wards eight, um, one and 14 as, as a pilot, uh, that's in effect now, right? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. As the, that, that pilot project is in effect. And then we're looking at the secondary suites policy citywide as part of the residential zoning bylaw that uh, Mr. Robichaud's team is leading. So. I understand that uh, you know everybody's uh, busy with COVID related things and I understand this being um, pushed off. The only question I have uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to staff is the, the Q2 for 2021. Um, we were trying to have this in place in the winter time-wise so, um, so that there'd be a, a, a warning period through the spring and then through the summer, it would come into effect at the beginning of the summer and it would provide uh, property owners this summer to come into compliance. And then in the fall is when we would start uh, actually enforcing. So the Q2, is there any chance that could be pushed back to Q1 in 2021? Uh, through the chair, I can certainly go back with the staff team that's working on that and seeing if we can get that pushed up into, um, I'll call it late Q1, um, in order to address that timeline that the councillor has raised. Thank you. And it's, uh, I think it it goes hand in hand with the with the secondary suites bylaw pilot, which is already in place. So uh, we we really need to follow through with the uh, with the licensing component. So I, I very much appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Would you like to move the OBL then, Councillor Danko? All right, and then seconded by Councillor Wilson. All in favor? And uh, General Manager Jason Thorne, any updates? What's going on, Jay? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair, there are actually two items that I, I would like to raise, um, both of them more sort of thank yous and acknowledgements. Um, and the first one, just to the, um, notwithstanding the fact that this meeting only took about an hour and a bit, the planning thank for you. this meeting took a great deal more than that. Um, so I wanna thank um, uh, Mr. Robichaud and Mr. Fayback, and Ms. Ms. Fayback in particular for all the work they did to, to get this meeting up and running, develop the procedures, um, clerks as well. Um, council will know that, our committee will know that it's not just this committee um, that started this week. Last week, we got the Municipal Heritage Committee up and running and Committee of Adjustment. Um, so there's been quite an extraordinary amount of work done to, uh, to get these committees going. Um, we never as a city stopped receiving and processing development applications. Um, so the development approvals has continued to move um, and getting these committees up and running really is the last step that we needed in order to advance the planning application. So um, I just wanna thank the staff who were, who were part of that effort uh, and also the volunteers on those Heritage Committee and Committee of Adjustment who also had to quickly get up to speed on the training to be able to do these, these virtual meetings. Um, and then the second thing I just want to acknowledge and, and committee may not be aware of this, but um, about a week or so ago, uh, the West End Home Builders Association, that's our local home builders association, formerly known as the Hamilton Halton Home Builders Association, uh, were actually recognized uh, nationally by the Canadian Home Builders Association as the local home builders association of the year for the entire country, um, which really is quite an honor. Um, in receiving the, the, the recognition, um, a number of things were noted that the local, our local home builders association has done over the past year around education, around outreach, around um, promoting uh, work in the trades um, and involving the trades in the industry, 
um, supporting um, getting uh, uh, more women involved in skilled trades in the development industry, a whole number of initiatives that they've moved forward. Um, and uh, that is quite an important recognition, I think, for our local Home Builders Association to be recognized nationally. And um, I just want to uh, uh, congratulate um, uh, Rob Molinero, the president, and all of the members of their board, and also Suzanne Mamble and all of their staff uh, for having achieved that uh, a very significant accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, and thank you to uh, Julia and Sarah and uh, Tyler and everyone else who's uh, made this city uh, uh, really shine on outdoor patios given the pandemic. I know uh, it was planning staff and your people that have uh, worked very, very closely with uh, what is now, I think, 80 uh, properties and growing, and it's certainly a great time to uh, segue this into a promotion for our special council meeting in 20 minutes time. Uh, to your general manager's update, Councillor Partridge. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, I just wanted to um, uh, just kind of pick up on, on what General Manager Thorne has said. I, I want to recognize building staff and certainly our um, you know, uh, project managers who are out investigating. I can certainly attest to the fact that they have not stopped. They have been working just flat out on building permits, uh, investigating, you know, land use issues. I mean, certainly it's not just in Flamborough, although that seems to be a hot spot for a number of things. But throughout the entire city, you know, that the building permits haven't stopped. There's some very, very complex um, uh, planning and zoning and land use issues that are going on, and they really, they really have been uh, trying to turn things around. I've met with a number of contractors, uh, certainly in my area, uh, including landscapers, and um, you know, staff have just been uh, tremendous in being able to resolve things and and uh, turn things around. So I just wanted to uh, put that acknowledgement out there for all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you out there in this heat. All right, thanks, Jay, appreciate that. Can I have a mover and a seconder to receive the general manager's update? That's moved by Councillor, oh, sorry, Councillor Johnson, and then maybe we'll get you to move the update. Go ahead, Councillor. Yeah, thank you, I'd be happy to move the update. And just to reiterate what everyone else has been saying, I really wanted to highlight Jamil um, Sheffield, who is the uh, secretary for the Committee of Adjustment. We have three urban, or sorry, three rural members on this committee, and broadband was a real issue for them to try to participate in these meetings. So we opened up the um, the Glenbrook Council Chambers, and they sat six feet apart. Uh, we had a couple of days of prep for this, um, and uh, the one in the middle actually ended up being the chair for that day uh, because uh, Mark couldn't make it, but they did an amazing job, and I can tell you it was a sigh of relief to have everybody come into the virtual reality uh, days. But I really wanted to give a shout out to Jamil. That was quite challenging for her. She's not dealing with staff. She was dealing with private citizens and she did an amazing job. So Jason, please uh, filter that down uh, or up, uh, whichever way you want to look at it and uh, let her know that we really appreciated all her efforts. And I'd be, I'd be happy to move that. Seconded by Councillor Collins. All in favor? Excellent. Thank you. Committee, do we need to go into close for item 13-1? Councilor Johnson says no. Moving to uh, then um, approve. Seconded by Councilor Pearson. And Councilor Johnson, do you want to speak to that? Okay, so... We had the opportunity of talking to the ward councillor just prior to the meeting, and okay. she's in full support, and that's why I feel it's comfortable not going into camera and approving this. Okay, so this is uh, moved by Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor Pearson to approve the recommendations A, B, C, and D contained in report LS20018 slash PED20124 and the appendices here too. They remain confidential except as necessary to implement these recommendations at the discretion of the city solicitor and the balance of the report LS20018 slash PED20124 remain confidential. All in favor? Uh, 
All right. Thank you. All right, uh, colleagues, they'll be watching from the end zone and the West Towns and the Cork Towns in 20 minutes time for a very special uh, council meeting that's uh, coming up in uh, no time at all. So you guys uh, take a 20 minute break. We'll see you for that special uh, uh, meeting and uh, all of our other colleagues, too, I hope, as it relates to uh, making an enhancement to our outdoor pandemic patio program. Uh, Pylon is trying to get my attention. Pilon. Yeah, you, you'll need to uh, thank you for that. I, I'm surprised Lisa didn't catch it. You need to log off and then log back on to the special council meeting and a mover and a seconder to adjourn. Moved by Colin, seconded by Partridge. All in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks. Really good job. Really great stuff. Take care. See you in 20 minutes.